is to being your own boss. Getting out of paying taxes is unfortunately not one of them. If I'm being nice and letting pedestrians cross, you're jaywalking, sir. Hi, friends. It's been a minute since we've done a talk in the car. Mid-April. Can you guys believe how fast this year's gone by? <sighs> Well, I've seen some other people talk about this on the internet, so I'm gonna do the same. It's the most wonderful time of the year. Tax time. It's actually not the most wonderful time, but I thought I would shed some light on how, in my experience of how I now owe $3,000 in taxes. And let this shed some light on people who say, I really wanna work for myself, it would be the best thing ever. Would it be the best thing ever? Let's back up. Uh, let's go back to January of 2016. I was teaching as a young entrepreneur, not in a school system, but in an after school music program. And it was really nice, you could set your hours, you had a secretary there that would schedule all of your students, they managed the studio, they made sure the pianos were in tune, got you all the music you could want in the eyes of somebody who wanted to work for themselves because I was also acting more and I needed a job where I could set my own hours and still pay my bills. So teaching, voice, piano, music, theory, acting, all of that on my own schedule was really nice. I was my own boss. I set the hours. Um, they still you know, gave a bi-weekly paycheck, but it was really based off of how much I wanted to work. So that started in January of 2016, because you know we're dealing with 2016 taxes. And then I did a big show, and in my bio of this musical, I wrote where I worked. I figured, you know, I'm the star of a musical, people are going to see me, it was the biggest house that local actors could perform in in Columbus, Ohio. So in my bio, I said I worked at this music academy just to state it, just to be like, yep, I not only can sing this, I know what I'm doing too. The show closed on Sunday and I went in on Monday to teach, I think I think I did like four to 7.30. Those were the hours, cause you said your own hours. And my boss called me into his office, didn't say a word, pressed play on his answering machine. We're talking old school answering machine. There was message after message after message. I want my daughter to take from Kristen. I read Kristen's bio, I want to take from Kristen. So kind of overnight, my studio went from having, how many did I have? I had eight to 10 hours of teaching and I got bumped up to 26. And for, for, for making, you know, good money and working, even though it's only 26 hours, with, with the teaching salary, I have a master's in music, with the teacher's salary on an hourly tutor basis, it was more than enough to pay your bills and act your shows. So I was very lucky, I was so excited. I got to quit all my other side jobs. I was at this time working five side jobs. I was substitute teaching, working in retail, uh, singing church gigs under contract, teaching at that studio, and then I would teach private lessons um, on my own free time. But I got to quit substitute teaching, I got to quit retail, I kept the church job because that was only one day a week, and I kept a few of my high school private students, but my main money was coming from this, you know, entrepreneur, I run my studio, I pick my students, I choose my hours, it was great. And I expected to make a, a lot smaller yearly wage than I did. I made, I want to say almost twice as much as I thought I would, which was great. And I was very lucky for that. Fast forward to 2017. If you guys have been here for a while, you'll know, changed to full-time employment. Um, I actually left this job we're talking about March 1st of this year. Um, I do have a studio tour. I'm going to link my studio. If you want to see where I did teach, I'm going to link it right here. And I bought a home. That was not a very, that was not a cheap impulse purchase. Then we roll around to spring. My mom calls me up and I can tell she's going to tell me something I don't want to hear. Parents have a way when they are going to kind of lay something on you. They are slightly hesitant, like, 
what are you doing right now? Where are you? So they know you're not like, out in public about to have, you know, a breakdown. Not that I would have a breakdown. Never. Never. Um, so my mom calls and she said, hey, I, I've been working on your taxes. Side note, she's an accountant. I'm working on your taxes and even though you did work six months out of the year at a full-time job that did take out taxes, your entrepreneur small business that you ran out of this music studio did not take out any taxes. And I said, okay, that's fine. I'm sure I'm going to owe like what, maybe 800 to a thousand dollars. She went, no, because you doubled your numbers in the second half of the year and you made more than you thought you would. I'm being nice and letting pedestrians cross. You're jaywalking, sir. You're jaywalking. She laid it on me that I was going to owe upwards of $3,000. Normally, I'm not going to say I wouldn't care, because I would obviously care. That is a large amount of money. But I had also, during this time, you know, moved into the house. I hadn't found a sublet for my apartment. So at this time, I paid my apartment's rent, my new home mortgage, and my taxes. And fun fact, they were all due within a week of each other. I won't tell you the full number of this. Just please trust me, it's a nice big number. Um, but my mom is really good at her job and I'm nice enough that I have mom that will do my taxes. She was able to get them down to 2,500. So she did save me that $500. Thanks mom. And I mean, it's not the end of the world, but just for those that say they want to own their own business, let, let me just lay some things down for you and turn on the AC because it's hot. One, just because you work for yourself does not mean the government's not going to want a piece of your money. So put away 25% right off the bat. It's going to suck probably aren't making as much as you were at your regular job before you became an entrepreneur but please trust me please trust me from somebody that just wrote huge checks huge checks put that money away anybody who runs YouTube and makes money off of that they're an independent contractor what's called 1099 if you didn't know I guarantee you the smart ones Sarah over at budget girl I believe she does take out 25% um, I do believe she has a video about taxes and I'll ask her first, but if I'm allowed to, I will link her video right here and she will talk about how she set aside enough money and then she found out she didn't even need that much and she got to keep some of it. So even if you take out 25% and you don't need all of it, that money's yours still. It's still yours, but please know there are many perks, many advantages, excuse me, many advantages to being your own boss. Getting out of paying taxes is unfortunately not one of them. So that is my quick story of how I, of how I paid quite a bit in taxes. The naive part is I actually thought I would get money back because I didn't honestly think I taught that many kids this year, last year, and I started working a full-time job in June of last year. So I thought, oh yeah, my full-time job will counteract whatever I owed at my teaching job. It'd be fine. Clearly not. Anyway, that's my story. If you guys have just finished tax season, well, you should have finished tax season. By the time this video comes out, taxes will have been due. But if you have any tax stories, go ahead and leave them down below. I will also link my Instagram and Facebook somewhere here on the screen. And if you have not already subscribed to this channel, I rarely talk in my car anymore. But whether or not I do, you can be updated on each and every video if you click the little red subscription button down below. You guys have a wonderful week, and I will talk to you later. Bye! Let's not hit any cars today.